Holy shameless soup! Companions, you know this man before you. He is not one to boast or brag or to go looking for a fight. He is humble and honest, and he would not speak out unless the reasoning was sound. But this morning's new Pepakua Corps has made my blood boil. But I cannot stay silent. Samuel Kamakau, the Noah has been exposed, and you should start writing the history of Lakui Hawaii altogether. Today in his column, Kamo'olelo o Hawaii, he writes of the trouble with France in 1839. He explains that Captain Laplace of the French Navy, much angered by the treatment of Catholics in the islands, threatened to fire on Honolulu with the great guns of his warship, the Artemis, if the Moi, the king, did not pay him a ransom of $20,000. Well, this much is true. But then Kamakao goes on to say that the man who carried the ransom to the ship was a man called Reverend William Richards. Well, this is a lie, a puni puni. Kamakao's telling of the tale is only a guess. For the actual men who carried the ransom to the ship was Keku Anaoa and Ha'alilio. How do I know this? It is because I was left aboard the Armitis as a hostage for many days. It was a thing that happened to me in my life. Now Kamakao would write me out of that life. There is a fish boat in my throat. <laughs> This man before you who served the kingdom when he was a, a keiki, decades later was dismissed from the royal court of the Mo'i. And now, I am being dismissed from the Mo'olelo of Hawaii. Something must be done so that all the truth telling does not go out of the kingdom. But where to begin? With you. Oh, friends. You know me as John Papa'i. And I will tell you the true story of Hawaii. There was a time when to be honest was good for a man's health, good for a man's reputation. And to speak a lie, a puni puni was to be punished. Now the Ali'i worked for the good of the Maka'ainana, and the Maka'ainana worked for the good of the Ali'i. It was our kuleana, our responsibility, a promise that all Kanaka Ma'oli live by. Now the old ways weren't perfect. But to speak of them truthfully is to tell of the good with the bad. I was born August 3rd in the year 1800 in Eva O'ahu. I grew up with my mother Wana'oa and later my uncle Papa. Rooted in the earth were they like wise old banyan trees. And when my brother Ma'aloha and I, we were born, we became shoots of those great trees. And our Ohana hoped that our roots would form to be as strong and wise as theirs. Now when Ma'oloha became of age, he was to be sent to the royal court to be Kahu Ali'i. In my young mind, I understood this to be a servant, a protector of the Ali'i. He would tend to the Ali'i's possessions, his uh, spit box, his malo, etc. And if he did his duty well, he may one day grow to be an advisor to the Mo'i. Before he left, my mother brought both of us together and said a wise thing. Care for your ali'i, for they are ours alone. It is your kuleana. If you are honest and wise, you will live well. But if you are foolish, if you speak a puni puni, you will face the kapu. Now we had always lived under the kapu, but it was much stricter at the royal court, for the mo'i, King Kamehameha and his son Liho Liho were most sacred all Ali'i. A Mo'i's person was Kapu. A Mo'i's possessions were Kapu. A Mo'i's shadow was Kapu. And because of this, all Kahu must be ever watchful not to fall into a terrible trap. And this is what happened to my brother Ma'oloha. He was accused, he was accused of a terrible crime. He was accused of stealing Kamehameha's lay puki abu and selling it to a peddler for food. The punishment for this crime? My brother Maolo was strangled to death. You must go and take Maolo's place, my mother said. Why would you send me to a place where my brother died? Perhaps the same thing will happen to me. 
My Allah was dishonest, my mother said. He broke his kuliana. He spoke a puni puni. Your fate is for you to decide. I was uh, terrified when I entered the royal court and I saw the future Mo'i, Liho Liho. Now, Liho Liho was a cruel child. Whenever he spied my companion Kahuhu and I at play, he would run at us from a distance and bang our heads together. We became ever watchful of him, so whenever he became near, we ran away. I remember one day sitting peacefully by the Makaloa sedges, and I heard a voice say, here is the boy that runs away from you. I looked up, and it was Liho Liho and his kahu. And right away, all peace of mind left me because I knew I would be beaten. And beaten I was. A few weeks later, all the chiefs went down to Waikiki to surf. And Papa asked me to come along with him. He sat me down and told me that my time of service as kahu was to begin. But whom would I serve? Kamehameha or his son Liho Liho? I could feel Liho Liho's eyes on me, and I could feel the sweat on my brow. But I also heard the words of my mother in my head. Your fate is for you to decide. So I stood up, and I faced the gathered Ali, and said, Perhaps I shall serve Liho Liho. Why choose him, my father asked. He has no wealth. Well, I said to him, when he becomes wealthy, well, the servant becomes wealthy too. Well, in 1819, the great Kamehameha died, and it was now time for Liho Liho to become Mo'i. Now, soon after, he did the strangest thing. After listening to the truth-telling of his advisors, he announced to the people that the kapu was no longer pono for all, and it would be forever banished from Hawaii. I ran up to him and said, you cannot do this. You must stop this at once. The gods will be angry with us. Well, punishment from the gods never arrived. Instead, a new god came to Hawaii. In 1820, a huge ship full of foreigners sailed into the islands, bringing with them their Christian god and all his good works. And it was through their teachings that I realized the old ways were rife with problems. For now, we had the holy scriptures to tell us the truth. Now, if only we could read the words ourselves. The missionaries were well prepared. They brought with them Western learning. And when they brought it to the Liu said, teach these, my favorites. Through them, I shall learn what your teaching is. Those two favorites were none other than those two heads he used to bump together, Kahuhu and myself. He had trusted us because of our simple and honest ways. And Lihu Lihu gave to us an important kuleana. Four years later, a sad thing happened. Jehovah had called Lihu Lihu. But there was no time to grieve. My kuleana as Kahu Ali was not over. It was now time for me to protect and serve the new Mo'i, the boy Kaui Kia Uuli. This time my duties were much different. Instead of carrying the Ali'i's possessions, I was to become his teacher. I advised him the best I could so he would grow to be a strong and honest ruler. But Kaui Kia Uuli was an unruly boy. For years, he would not heed the words of his elders. He would waste his time drinking the liquor of the foreigners. I would sit down with him, explain to him the error of his ways to no avail. So I, I did not know what to do. I became so frustrated that I, I left the young Mui and I went to serve his Kuhina Nui instead. I had done a dishonest thing. I had broken my kuleyama. I've forgotten the words of my mother. Care for your Ali, for they are others of you. Well, fortunately,
Kaui Piao Uli was not so far gone as I had thought. When he grew older, he came to me and asked me to come back to his royal court. He asked me to help him write Hawaii's first constitution in 1840. A privy council and a house of nobles were created, and I was given a seat in each. Now this was a, a complicated time, you see, because the lehua flower of the Hawaiian kingdom blossomed, and the mana nui, the great powers, saw it ripe for the picking. America, France, Britain, each wished to see their flag fly over the islands. I stood next to the Mo'i and helped him navigate the pebbles that were the great game of politics. Men like Captain Laplace, who tried to take the kingdom, was always outwitted. Because of Kawi Kia'o'uli's wise and honest rule, Hawaii became a modern sovereign kingdom. Now, when I was not helping the Mo'i, my wife Sarah and I tended the royal children at Kula Ali, later to become known as the Royal School. It was decided that a school should be built for the Ali'i, the royal children, so they would grow and learn together in harmony. Two of my charges at the school were Kawiki O'Uli's nephews and future Mo'i, Alexander Liho Liho and Lot. When they uh, entered the school, they were asked to give up the great trains of Kahu that had accompanied them since birth. Being Kahu and Liho myself, could not bear to see them separated from their closest companions. But this was a new time, and I may have mistakenly stepped on a man of war jellyfish. <laughs> you see, some of the Kahu still believed in the old ways and hated the missionaries for the changes they brought to our shores. They saw the missionaries as invaders, and they filled their young boys' heads with, with lies. The royal school was a bad place. And so persuasive were they that Alexander Liho Liho tried to flee the school three times in one day. So I tried to separate the boys from this, these men. Now, Kaui Keaouli passed away. He was called to heaven. And now the young boys came into power. And they made it known that the foreigners were not their friends. In 1863, Lot took the throne, and he and I had a terrible exchange. Lot told the people that Kaui Kiaouli tried to sell the kingdom to the foreigners, and I said, no, this was a dishonest thing to say. Kaui Kiaouli only tried to serve his people by creating a sovereign kingdom, safe from the powers that be. He had surrounded himself with wise advisors, both Kanaka and Hauli alike. Kawikiaouli was truly a Pono Ali'i. Now the new Mo'i found my truth-telling inconvenient, and he would be upset whenever I questioned him, and he was not happy that I was friends with some of the foreigners. So when Lot appointed the cabinet of his new government, John Papa'i'i, who had served the Privy Council for 26 years, and as a Kahu Ali'i for 60 years, was dismissed from service. Now many, uh, many people say that the foreigners are running down Kanaka culture, petitions are being written so that the foreigners should be expelled from government posts and the Haole should not be able to purchase land. And the Hawaiians, they no longer go to church in the great numbers they once did. The Mo'i has found himself with men who says what he wishes to hear. That the foreigners are bad men and the old ways were the best ways. But how would he know that? He was not living during those times. What, would he bring back the kapu where you could strangle to death a boy because of a, a mistake? No. He has written out the voices of old Hawaii and it must be put back in. Now a newspaper, companions, a newspaper is a thing of great money. It has the power for evil and darkness. It may spread lies and half-truths. It may divide us. It may so erode our history that it is not recognized by the people who lived it. But a newspaper, oh my. It can be used for the good of the people. 
It is where we can share our opinions, share news of our kingdom. It is where Kanaka and Haole can take great pride in our history, both old and new. It is a thing which we can all come together, united as one single great Hawaiian Lahui. Now perhaps, John Papa Ii should join the ranks of newspaper men. I would write New Pepe Kuakua and say that I wish to publish my own column, Kamolelo or Hawaii as it actually happened, so that the people can see the dishonest ways of those in power. Now Samuel Kamakao has much experience in fighting those who disagree with his history. Well, I hope he is ready to fight one who has lived that history. Though I am no longer Kahuali'i, I will never, never stray from being the protector of the truth. Aloha and good night.